the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joyous feast. Joyous feast. Good morning, Emrys. I love you, my friend. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> um, in the reading from the epistle to the Romans today, we hear of how, you know, while we are God's enemies, Christ came and died for the ungodly. And if God, you know, so much, loved us so much in that regard, how is he going to ever stop loving us and bringing us into his life? And this, it's, it's a demonstration of something, and I've mentioned it before, that some of the, the church fathers speak of how the, the grace of God and the love of God is like the sun. It just shines everywhere on everyone, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done. If you go out into the sun, it's shining on you. And now, I think in the passage from the Gospel this morning, we get a sense of how important it is, though, to turn our attention, our whole eye. You, know, you can think of the eye as being the you know, what do you do with your eyes? It's where, it, when you look, you focus your attention. This is what the, the eye being sound is all about, that you focus your eye on one thing, on the kingdom of God, and not on anything else, not scattering it and having it kind of divided up in all sorts of places. But you, you, you bring it to one focus, the kingdom of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the goodness of God, and when you do that, everything else in life is supplied. Another way of thinking about this, having this sound and whole eye, is the reality of kind of living within the moment and living in, in a sacramental way within that moment. So that we're not pulled here and there by all sorts of anxiety and worries about all sorts of things, but being present, truly present in the moment. And there's a beautiful um, passage in Dr. Albert Rossi's book. He has a chapter on the sacra sacrament of the present moment. And he talks about, you know, he said it's interesting that Orthodox theologians, Metropolitan Callisto swear among others, speak of the present moment in sacramental terms. And he says, well, within the life of the church, a sacrament is a mystery. It's something that goes beyond, you know, our, our grasp. And Dr. Rossi, he uses the image of incense. He says, think about how incense is there, and you breathe it in, and you participate in it. It fills the room, you know, so there's a very sensual participation when we burn, when we offer incense within the life of the church. And also, it, is, it, it ascends, it's rising up. And yet, as much as we participate in it, there's no way for us to grab a hold of it. You know, there's no way for us to put our hands on it and like sort of, you know, grab it and hold it down and say, stay here. And so it's beyond our grasp, and yet at the same time we participate in it. So he talks about the present moment is like this, the moments of our lives as we're living. It's something that's constantly in flow, in movement, and we participate in it, but that doesn't mean that we can control it. And a lot of our anxiety within our lives, and this is what our Lord is telling us today in the Gospel passage, comes from trying to control it and from trying to keep the illusion that we can control it, rather than um, letting things be and stepping back. And so he says we can't grasp incense or smoke. We can't grasp mysteries. 
And yet incense takes us to a deeper experience of what is real, what is really going on. And this is what mystery is. He quotes St. Simeon, the new theologian, further down. Do not worry about what will come next. You will discover it when it comes. And it's the same as our Lord saying today in the Gospel. Why are you anxious about so many things? And finally, he has this nice quotation about the present moment. Maybe I'll wait for the fire trucks to go by. <laughs> Lord have mercy, I don't know what's going on. There were trucks earlier too, right? There was... There they go. It's a good sign, by the way, whenever you, you know, you have ambulances or, you know, you should say a little prayer, you know, when you see stuff like that for the people that are, in, that are the workers, the people that are in the ambulance, you know, the stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. say a little prayer for them. Mm -hmm. um, but Martin Laird, this is a quote from a book called The Sunlit Absence. He says, the present moment has an utterly reliable way of being exactly the way it is at any given moment. And so that sounds like, you know, it's, well, it is what it is, you know. And uh, it seems so almost absurd, like, why do you even have to say this? The present moment reveals the sunlit absence. Life as firm and unshakable as it is an ungraspable flow. Unshakable because it is our foundation, ungraspable because it is constantly being poured out as a pure gift. And so it's unshakable, this present moment, but then it's also completely ungraspable because it's not ours, it's just a total given. It's just a gift. And so Dr. Rossi, in reflecting on that passage, continues, God wants men to attend chiefly to two things, to eternity itself and to that point in time where we contact eternity, which is only in the present moment. It's not when we're caught in our head worrying about the future. It's not when we're caught in our head um, overwhelmed and burdened by the past, but it's in the present moment. This is where you can, where, where time touches eternity. The present moment is the point at which time touches eternity. Of the present moment, and of it only, humans have the experience God has of reality as a whole. In it alone, freedom and actuality are offered to them. And so for an example, think of the thief that's on the cross next to the Lord as he's dying. And he's dying because of crimes that he committed. And we have a beautiful hymn within our life, in the, within the church, where we say, the wise thief you made worthy of paradise in a single moment. A single moment. That's another way that you can actually translate the passage. It talks about our eye being sound. You could almost translate it to say that our not eye needs to be single. It needs to be one and unified. And so you see how the thief on the cross was saved in that one moment. Freedom and actuality were offered to him in that one moment. In spite of all of the circumstances of his life, which were horrible, he, was all, he, he could find salvation in encountering Christ in that one moment. And so Dr. Rossi continues, when we are alive, when we live in the current moment, we are a walking Christmas day, a continual rebirthing of the Lord into the universe. In the person who dwells 
in the present now, God begets his son without ceasing. Then he quotes uh, a French theologian, Paul Evdokimo. If you've ever heard of him, he's written a lot of beautiful books. But Paul Evdokimo said, The hour through which you are at present passing, the man whom you meet here and now, the task on which you are engaged at this very moment, these are always the most important in your whole life. So you have to think about that. I could ask, you know, students. I could, I could tease students here, younger people. When they're in high school, does it feel like it's the most important place to be ever? <laughs> it feels like I want to get out of here, you know? And that you, you want to focus on, like, when can I get out of here? And you think about, you know, so you start to think about all these things and, and build a, a lot of ideas in your head. And, um, and we get, and we lose something in doing that. We get lost. Um, when we forget that within the present moment, as it's given to us, no matter where we are, no matter how horrible the circumstances happen to be, that it's given to us as a pure gift. It's given to us as grace. And so, may the Lord help us to lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and to really embrace this reality of the present moment, no matter where we are. I remember, and I can, I can give you one last example. One time I was working um, at a restaurant back in Rochester and it was absurdly busy, and there was no one else to help. You know, like I think one of the cooks had called out, I was in the kitchen by myself, and this gigantic, and I have all this prep to do, and then this gigantic party shows up for lunch, and we're understaffed, and, and I'm cooking at every single station in the kitchen. There's like, you know, there's, there's a wood-fired pizza oven, there's a saute station, there's salads, there's sandwiches, there's, a, you know, just all over the place, running everywhere trying to get everything done. And I remember getting really, really angry <laughs> that I was caught there in this place, super angry, and wanting, you know, and, and, and then I thought, wait a minute, how does this, this moment right now relate to all of eternity? You know, like what, you know? And suddenly I, I was just totally at peace even though it was a terrible you know, situation to be in. And there were a lot of things maybe to gripe about or to be bitter about. There were all sorts of things that I could have been upset about, but it's like I was, it's totally at peace. You know, because, because when the heart and the eye and the mind line up and are focused on the kingdom of God, we can be in any sort of circumstances and the difficulties don't seem so bad, you know. They don't, they're not a huge burden. And actually, we can even take them, like the prayer of Metropolitan Philaret, where he says, what, what's, you know, whatsoever comes to me throughout the day in unexpected events, mm -hmm. let me not forget that everything is sent by you. Let me live that way, as if everything is coming to me from your hand as a gift, whatever it is, even if it's really ugly. But knowing that because God loves us, even within that ugliness, there's something good there. There's something that, that, that we can, you know, in relating to it in the present moment and in seeking God, that we can begin to um, be changed, even by a difficult circumstance. And so may God help us in that regard, because as much as the present moment is the only place where we start to live, actually, we find it incredibly hard to actually stay there and not to move, to be still there. And this is why, you know, we, our whole tradition, we have all these, these saints, you know, hesychasts, that, that go out into the wilderness seeking stillness, seeking to be still in the present moment. And, and it's a struggle. It's a huge struggle. And, uh, and it's a struggle that most people, you know, for the most part, were, were unwilling to undertake because it requires us um, 
to be vulnerable and it requires us to let go of so much of what we think of as what we have invested ourselves in and think of as the substance of our life. It requires us to let go of so much of that. And so that's a really hard thing to do. But by God's grace, and within the life of the church, as we keep with the sacramental life of the church and keep entering into this mystery where we participate in it and yet can't grasp it, and we're willing to do that, as we continue to do that, God, by his own grace, continues to usher us along. And so we trust in that and not in ourselves. Amen.